Jackson became the first solo artist in history to have four singles from the same album all reach the top 10 of the Billboard Hot 100. GOAT STATUS! <laughs> However you do it, GOAT STATUS! <laughs> GOAT STATUS! It is what it is, let the past be the past Just know BAM gonna be good and turn up on they ass It's your time, it's his time it's BAM's time, BAM's time to shine, your time to shine too. Yes, yeah, shoot. Hey, check it out, man. Back at it again with another reaction video. I went on a spree of reaction videos from Michael Jackson, commentary, and things like that. Because for one, y'all was fucking with him. And y'all kept requesting me to react to this, react to that. You know, people, I think I just got a knack for breaking things down and talking. I'm just a good speaker. I know I probably ran a lot. I know people probably click my videos and be like, bro, this is that reaction channel slash podcast channel. Include that. But this is that reaction channel that... They pause it and talk for 36 minutes. Like, bro, it's not not literally. <laughs> Y'all got to understand, bro. If I just sat here and just a lot of shit, I'm giving commentary, bro. It's a re like when I watch reaction channels that I don't watch a lot. But the ones I do watch, I'm watching it for the person. You feel what I'm saying? I'm watching it because I want to go watch the video by itself. I ain't, I'm going to look it up by itself. But that's not the here nor there. How Michael Jackson changed music. Another Michael Jackson video, obviously. Let's get straight into this, man. I don't think there'll ever be another person to do it. Gary, Indiana, August 29th, 1958. Michael Jackson, dude. Michael Joseph Jackson is born. The eighth of ten children at the time of Michael's birth, the family had struggled to make ends meet. Michael's mother, Catherine Jackson, raised the enormous family almost single-handedly in this tiny 670 square foot home that you can still visit today on 2300 Jackson Street. Damn, I got the persons. God, they must know. Well, obviously nobody lived there. No, it's probably nobody probably lived there. I know they didn't put an actual persons. You feel me? Thing in there, like a dress if somebody moved in after they moved out. But damn. But the they said she sing almost single handedly did it. What what she mean? Where did that that his dad was around? I know him and his dad had a a rocky relationship. I think dad had a rocky relationship with all majority of the kids, but his dad was around though. Yep, that's the real name of the street. The house had just two bedrooms. Damn. The sons slept in bunk beds in one of the bedrooms, and the daughters all slept in the living room. One of Michael's younger brothers, Brandon, tragically died just a few months after he was born. Damn, to make ends meet, Catherine worked part-time at Sears. Michael's father, Joe Jackson, was a former boxer and crane operator at U.S. Steel. There are many reports that Joe was abusive to his kids both mentally and physically despite all that joe was able to they convince all had his the three froze. oldest sons jackie tito and jermaine to start a band in 1964 joe had been a musician himself having performed with his younger brother luther in a blues band called the falcons Catherine also had a musical background Bro. playing both piano and clarinet and singing by the way jackie tito Tito and Jermaine all sang pretty well, as it turns out, especially after Catherine helped them learn how to harmonize. Tito began playing guitar, and Jermaine began playing the bass to form the Jackson Brothers. Oh, so that's Joe what it was before the five. As a ticket out of poverty, he led a strict routine of rehearsing every day. Jackie, Tito, and Jermaine would often come home from school, rehearse for hours, eat dinner, do homework, and then go straight to bed. Their incredible work ethic began to pay off though as they got paying gigs at places like local grocery stores soon joe realized that it would be beneficial if more of his sons joined the band the jacksons became the jackson five after michael and marlon joined as how factual is this bro the way dude talking is making me uh, yeah, I ain't gonna lie. When I be reacting to certain videos, and there's no disrespect, bro. But I'm just being honest, bro. The person who I'm reacting to the video, when they vo like his voice is so bland. Like I, ain't, I'm just being honest, bro. I'm calling it for what it is. My bad, my god. But your voice is bland. I'm sitting here trying not to doze off. I'm, bro. Y'all seeing me? I'm doing my best to not doze off in the video. 
singers. Michael wasn't even six years old yet when he began performing with his older brothers. And yeah. soon the family realized that he had the strongest voice of all the sons. And Joe made Michael the, the youngest one is always the youngest one in the band is always gonna get looked at, bro. Especially if he's decent. He may not even been the best singer all the time. But he probably, but he he could have been. But the fact that he's the youngest in this shit, oh, oh, it's going, oh, yeah, he, he going to stand out. He, oh, baby, give me one more chance, A, B, C, as easy as one, two, three, you know what I'm saying? Like, he just sitting there and be, like, he just, bro, he going to get all, it's like, it's like LaMelo Ball, the youngest brother. He got all, bro, we knew he, what he was going to be since day, bro, LaMelo Ball literally plays like he's not trying. I don't know what it is with his game. His game is so weird to me, bro, but he just make it look like, I don't know. The lead singer, Joe, was particularly hard on Michael. Michael I said this since day one. They really didn't, this shows their work ethic was so crazy again. Never in my life seen none of the brothers with haircuts. Like, they trimmed their hair down, but I didn't see... There's no hairline, no lineup, nothing. Maybe tapers weren't a big thing in the 80s. Probably... I know it wasn't a big thing in the no 60s, 70s, 80s. Probably even 90s. Probably started coming around probably late 2000s. You get what I'm saying? But I've never seen any of them with the hair... With the, with the, with the lineup, bro. No, bro. Later recalls that his father both emotionally and physically abused him during rehearsals. Yeah, Apparently, I heard. I heard his dad used to make fun of his nose and stuff like that, and that's why he changed his nose when he got older. So I ain't trying to throw because I feel like dads do get a lot of heat for being hard on their kids, understanding that sometimes tough love is very much needed. I feel like dads, dads is always looked at as the devil in terms of certain things like. Even in relationships, the man is always looked at as like, what is he doing? If you see, if you hear a man yelling at a girl, what is he doing? Like, you know, if you hear, if you see him getting upset at something that she's constant, like nobody gonna question her. You know what I'm saying? And and I'm just being honest. Like, dads is always kind of viewed as the villain. I learned that, but there, I think, I think there are ways you have to. As a parent, I'm not a parent yet, so people are like, you're not even a parent. I think the biggest thing you can do in life is learn, learn to adapt and learn to take. To understand that you can't hurt your kids by certain things that you say. It's not about being soft. You know. So that's just the reality of it. He's sitting in a chair with a belt in his hand. Ready to punish him for any mistake. Michael later also said his dad made fun of him for having a quote fat nose. In 1966 the Jackson 5 won their first talent show at Theodore Roosevelt High School after Michael gave a breakout performance singing the song Barefootin' by Robert Parker. There would be many talent show wins after this. For the next two years, the Jackson 5 toured the Midwest, often at bars and clubs, including uh, strip bars, apparently. More appropriately, though, they played at local auditoriums and high school dances and slowly began to get a following on August 13th, 1960. Following them with no social media. Think about it. People was just, this is back when they probably had them pamphlets and shit like that. You get what I'm saying? It's probably before the pamphlets. I don't know how they kept up with these. It was just newspapers, bro, really. While touring the East Coast, the Jackson 5 won the weekly amateur show at Harlem's legendary Apollo Theater. On November 21st, Joe was able to secure the Jackson 5's first record contract with Gordon Keith of Steel Town Records, mm. a label based in Gary. Steel Town released the Jackson 5's debut single, Big Boy, on January 31st, 1968. I Michael even... was nine years old when his entire Fall. family gathered around the radio to hear the song broadcast for the very first time. I wonder time. how much money While they the started did making. not chart, it eventually sold more than 10,000 copies. And after that, the Jackson 5 was able to secure a deal with Motown Records, baby. So, 10,000 copies, that's probably a lot back then. This is ninth, This is ninth, the late 1960s. It's probably a lot back then. Their first single with Motown, I Want You Back, 
did chart. In fact, it was a huge hit worldwide, shooting up to number one on multiple charts. The Jackson 5 performed the song on their very first national television appearances, including a notable appearance on The Ed Sullivan Show on December 14th, 1969. Around that time, Michael moved in with Diana Ross in. for a while. Ross would become a very influential person. He in moved life. in with her? It didn't take long before the Jackson Hey, y'all, this vegetable, he moved in with her? were one of the biggest musical acts in the country. In fact, some say they were the original boy band. Michael Jackson, the undeniable star of the Jackson 5, with his incredible singing talent, found himself a huge celebrity at just a They tried to say Michael Jackson can't sing. I just be looking at... This is how I know it don't matter how much success you get, you're going to have somebody who says you can't do something. That's not even really hating on them. That's just their opinion. But you're going to have somebody who thinks you're not good at what you do. 20, 27 million people could think could think some good of you but then you got them that small percentage that don't you know but for some reason celebrities love to pay attention to that i i be you know i be seeing certain things on social media celebrities love to respond to negative comments but never they'll do a whole video and i did it one time i'm not a celebrity but i did a video one time when i, when I responded to a comment that one of like somebody left on one of my youtube videos probably like six seven eight months probably like it was probably like five months ago and ever since then, I said, why did I make a whole video about this? Like, it was funny. I was just, man, I was clowning her the whole time. But it, I just told myself, bro, I'm about to, every time on my Instagram story, when I post comments, like, I post on only positive comments. You get what I'm saying? But the, it's just always, like, if somebody tells you Michael Jackson could not sing, that just lets you know, no matter how good you are, somebody going to think you're not good at what you do. Somebody don't think LeBron's good at basketball. I, I promise you. Somebody walking the earth right now thinks LeBron's not good at basketball. I don't know why. God, take care of him. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> but you need your ass beat. 11 years old. The band followed up I Want You Back with three more number one hits. ABC. It's easy. It's one, I'll two, be there. three. This success. Y'all like, is that the only part you know? Known yeah. as Jackson no. Mania. When the Jackson 5 regularly performed to sold out concerts around the world and they sold tens of millions of records. Soon the Jackson 5 became Motown's most successful act, especially with the youngins, young girls would often rush the stage at the concerts. I wish for once we could finish a show and not have to leave before the end because of the crowds rushing the stage. Michael once complained, we have a real good ending, but we never get the chance to do it. And while all five... There was no security back then? members shined michael was the biggest star of them all as soon as 1970 i know it was some jealousy the jacksons moved out to a large estate in encino california that money came Motown in decided to launch a solo career for him the label gathered the same team of producers who helped create songs with the jackson five to record michael's debut studio album got to be there Mo i already know it had to have been some jealousy going you y'all think even those is his brothers, granted, but do you think that any of them was looking at him like, damn, bro, like they taking him from us, or damn, why they giving Michael only this? You know, they they because the, like, did he go solo because he wanted to go solo, or was it the label doing this? Like, I it'd be certain things I'd be wanting to know and find out because he went solo. Like, you talk about the Jackson Five, but you really talk about Michael Jackson. Let's just be honest. I found out about Michael Jackson about. Michael Jackson. I found out about he was in. I found out about the Jackson Five way after Michael. I started listening to Michael Jackson. You know, obviously I'm in elementary school listening to Michael Jackson, but I never really. You know, I found out about the band and stuff like that late, like way later on. So I just always wonder: was there like a little animosity? Did he not get along with his brothers? Cause I feel like that happens. Maybe not all four, but it's gonna be that one sour apple out the bunch. You know, somebody. Motown released the album on January 24th, 1972. Michael was 13 at the time. 13. Got to be there, mostly rode the success of this the Jackson 5, peaking at number 14 six. on the Billboard 200 chart. It featured three notable singles, the title track, I Wanna Be Where You Are, and Michael's rendition of a previous hit, Rockin' Robin, perhaps worried that his voice was going to get way deeper soon, dramatically changing his sound. Motown 
on quickly had Michael record a follow-up to Got To Be There just months after recording it. Motown released Michael's second studio album, Ben. His voice did change. His voice when he was like younger, it wasn't like he can make, it wasn't as soft. His voice when he got older was like soft for real. And on August 4th, 1972, the title track was Michael's first number one single as a solo artist. The album didn't do quite as well as got to be there, but critics did seem to like it more. Meanwhile, Michael still was a major part of the Jackson 5, oh. despite their waning success. Michael's brother, Jermaine, also had a burgeoning solo career. Did he? And by 1972, Motown already was shifting its marketing by promoting Michael and Jermaine more than the Jackson 5. Randy, Michael's only younger brother, had also started performing with the group. When Michael's older brothers began hooking up with female fans, Michael did not. The prospect of hooking up with a girl seemed to terrify him, and few folks know that he was actually quite quite a lonely teenager. The two places where he didn't seem to be lonely? The stage and the studio. And strangely, as his speaking voice lowered, his singing voice, eh, really didn't change that much. True. If anything, the older he got, the wider his range. It was truly a unique gift, and Motown noticed. The label got him into the recording studio for a third album before his brother Jermaine. That third album was Music and Me, released by Motown on April 13th, 1973. It featured three singles, the title track, With a Child's Heart, and Happy. Yeah, even though the cover featured Michael strumming an acoustic guitar, he most definitely did not play an instrument on this album, but, I mean, his one instrument, his voice, sounded better than ever. Critics generally praised Music and Me. Over the next couple years, the Jacksons all realized they were getting screwed over quite a bit by Motown and sought for a new record label. So the record labels doing whole shit has been around for years. I seen Snoop Dogg talking about Michael Jackson didn't even make, uh, wasn't making money off of his albums for a little bit or something like that. I, I don't know if he said he wasn't making like any money he just meant like he wasn't making what he should have been making. I think that's what he was saying. And I think that's what they're saying now, like Motown. And Michael Jackson, is a clip of Michael Jackson talking about for years what the um, people do with the streaming and stuff like that. It's been going on for a while now. So, okay, that makes sense. Cause I was wondering, like, I, I used to always wonder, like, what is the, like, what, how does the, like, what are the percentages of the deal? Like, what, I, what are the particulars of the deal? Excuse me. Like, I used to always wonder, like, bro, cause I saw somebody say, Thriller did all this, and that's probably a good seven, eight thousand dollars right there, with billions of streams. And somebody said, "How's that only like you know?" I just didn't understand what was going on. That's why they they, they be saying record labels ain't the way to go, you know, if for mutant for artists and stuff like that. It's been go they say it's been going on since Michael Jackson's time, you know, probably before that. So. And despite less people buying their records, their music was becoming more ambitious. In June 1975, Joe Jackson was able to secure a much more lucrative contract with Sony's Epic Records. With One thing you can say about the dad, though, bro, the dad is, bro, he doing, if this is all accurate, he put, bro, he getting, he getting contracts for the kids, bro. He doing something for his kids, bro. Which gave the Jackson Five more than I don't know if he was doing it, like, he's, you gotta say he's doing something, bro. Royalties was getting with Motown. That said, Jermaine stayed with Motown, likely due to him marrying Hazel Gordy, the daughter of Motown founder Barry Gordy. Motown got one more solo album out of Michael, Forever Michael, released on January 16th, 1975. It featured the singles We're Almost There, Just a Little Bit of You, and One Day in Your Life. With these songs, we heard Michael's voice as it would mostly sound for the rest of his life. Anyway, to get out of their obligations with Motown, the Jackson 5 changed their name to simply The Jacksons. And by this point, it wasn't just the sons who were performing. Michael's sisters, Rebby, Latoya, and Janet all could also sing. God damn, In fact, they had all of the Jackson kids. kids, except Jermaine, performed to the world on a variety TV show 
called The Jacksons that aired between 1976 and 1977 on CBS. By then, though, it seemed Michael would soon be on a much different path than the rest of his family. In October 1977, he moved to New York City to play the Scarecrow in the musical The Wiz. Well, The Wiz flopped. It made little money and critics trashed it. During this time in New York City, Michael, now 19 years old, got introduced to early hip-hop. By this time, Michael was also writing his own songs and gaining more confidence. So he wasn't writing, well obviously it was a group thing and it was a group thing with Jackson 5, but so did he finish school? Like, they, they don't talk about school like that in here. Did he finish? Did he graduate high school? Not only that, he and his brothers once again had mainstream success with the release of their album, Destiny. And that was the first album in which they all finally had full artistic control. Michael decided he wanted to once again have a solo career, setting out to record new stuff that sounded nothing like his stuff with his brothers. He teamed up with producer Quincy Jones and a new team of songwriters and recorded new songs in late 1978 and early 1979 that indeed marked a big departure from Michael's previous work with his brothers. These new songs mixed disco with funk and soul in ways no previous songs did. Epic Records was quite happy with the results and the new songs made up what would become Michael's fifth studio album, Off the Wall, released on August 10th, 1979. Off the Wall was a groundbreaking release and still holds up as one of the greatest albums of all time. The album's success marked Michael's rapid no rise into no superstardom. Off the Wall peaked at number three on the Billboard 200, ultimately going on to sell more than 20 million copies worldwide. Critics also praised it, with many today calling it a landmark release of the entire disco era. Off the Wall featured five hit songs, Don't Stop Till You Get Enough, till you get enough. Rock with you, She's Out of My Life, Girlfriend, and the title track. Michael Jackson became the first solo artist in history to have four singles from the same album all reach the top ten of the Billboard Hot 100. Goat status. Ah, however you do it. Goat status. Ah, goat status. Off the Wall got Jackson his first Grammy for Best R&B Vocal Performance. He'd go on to win 12 more throughout his career. Now that Michael was a Goat status. superstar around the world, he predictably left his brothers behind. Wait, Damn. what was that? Oh, no. He Why apparently you say it like that? didn't. In fact, he stuck right with them as they continued to tour and record as if his solo career wasn't the biggest on the planet. By this point, Michael was incorporating more and more sophisticated dancing routines into performances. Well, while practicing these routines at a rehearsal in 1979, he accidentally fell off stage and broke his nose. This For marked real? the first time he would get a nose job, and his nose would constantly be monitored monitored by the media when did he broke he fell off and broke his nose how, how high he didn't try to break like he didn't try to brace your foot like what i don't know that don't sound right i thought he just got the nose the the shit because the nose job because he was insecure not, well yeah i guess insecure about it for the rest of his career as he reportedly got several more nose jobs over the years the Jack here, as he reportedly got sucked. So first it was, yeah, you can tell. Damn, bro. The nose is actually such a funny part of your of your body. Like, I feel like I people used to say I had a fat nose. I not feel like people really did just say I have fat nose, big head. I got a box head, square head, and some other shit. But the, if you don't have a nose, you look ugly as shit. No matter how your nose looks, like you look ugly as shit if you don't have a nose. So really making fun of somebody's nose is kind of stupid. Um, yeah, he definitely changed it for sure. This isn't off of no breaking my nose or whatever. This is yeah, 
the show changed it. You could tell it's 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 like more narrow. Several more nose jobs over the years. The Jacksons released Triumph on September 26, 1980. Michael contributed heavily to the songwriting process on this album, and it was another hit both critically and commercially. At every show on the tour to support Triumph, it was Michael's solo songs from Off the Wall that were the crowd favorites. In February 1981, Michael finally moved out on his own and bought a condo in Encino. He hesitated moving out of his parents' house for a while, though, and many say it was because he struggled with loneliness. He was 23 years old when he finally learned how to drive. Bro, you never uh, you never really, un really understand what these people in these higher levels really go through. I think back then it's a little different. He had to cross so a lot of people could walk. I think how Michael Jackson... I've always said he seemed so mysterious, but like awkward in a way i don't know if awkward is the best word to use but he's just like on stage you think him on stage and him even i've never met him but i'm and i can just tell from interviews and what i've seen him on stage is not him off stage like, it's so different he said he's only he even said he feels the most comfortable on stage i just i i, I always wanted to know why like on some therapist type shit like why did you always like you know you seem so shy like 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 wh where did that come from like were you always because you seem somebody seeing you on stage would not think that they think you lit as hell off stage how, how you are on stage they think you lit as hell in person but he just seems so to himself and it's just like i think that made even a girl's crazy for him because it was like they want to know why like why is he so like he's like then he's running into the car because he's not because he's not trying to get mobbed by fans and shit like that like he's just you hear him in interviews like, bro, why he like why he's so like he's super soft spoken, like why he, you know, he's just you kinda want him to have the attitude like, man, I don't know what y'all talk like shit, it is what it is, man. But then again, we only know what we see in interviews. We haven't really sat down, had conversations with him. You know, he's I'm sure he's used cuss words and shit like you know, just more like you know, like 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 relaxed, like let like laid back type shit. Or less laid like I can't explain it. He's laid back, but he's so like this in the regular day life from what I've seen. And we always want him to just, you know, shrug his shoulders a little bit, you know, just let it all go. Around that time, Jackson narrated the soundtrack to E.T. Also around that I've never time, seen Jackson e. recorded some stuff with Freddie Mercury, the lead singer of Queen. Meanwhile, he was also recording more solo stuff, again working with Quincy Jones, and determined to make an album where, quote, every song was a killer. Well, that killer album ended up being Thriller, the best-selling album of all time. Jackson's sixth studio album, Epic released it on November 29th, 1982. Thriller was an immediate hit, becoming Jackson's first number one album on the Billboard 200. It spent 37 weeks at number one on that chart and ultimately sold 70 million copies worldwide. You heard that right. 70 million copies holy crap i saw Not only is it the best song. i saw the girl in thriller was saying she wanted more money because of how well thriller did in a, in, a, in a short film and i was just looking like man that's crazy that's why some people you don't be having people in your vids bro because they be wanted like bro you didn't know that nobody knew like you know like it's just so if somebody if something makes let's say that video alone made somebody five hundred thousand dollars you think as you was in it, you supposed to get half of that? That don't make any sense, bro. Selling album of all time, it is sold. Mind you, it was him. Like he was the the, 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 the act. Don't get me wrong. The backup dancers did they shit. Sold 32 million by the end of 1983 alone. Anyway, critics also adored Thriller, with many saying it was Michael's defining album, the best album of his career. Thriller also set the record for the most top 10 singles from an album. Those songs were The Girl Is Mine, a duet he did with Paul McCartney, Billie Jean, Beat It, Wanna Be Starting Something, Human Nature, Pretty Young Thing, and the title track, which, along with Billie Jean and Beat It, are Jackson's most popular songs today. The title track featured one of the greatest Why don't they show the regular one? They only show the 4K time. one. 
the Thriller music video not only helped Short make film. Jackson a worldwide star, but also helped MTV itself become much more popular. The music video made music videos a more serious art form and later became the first music video inducted into the United States National Film Registry by the Library of Congress. And finally, the music video established Jackson as arguably the most influential dancer in the world, with his zombie dance becoming popular at parties. On May 16th, 1983, Jackson performed Billie Jean dancing in a way in which he glided backwards, but he looked like he was still going forward, even though the dance had been around before this performance. Say moonwalk. Doing it so well that night made it popular. Just and say the word. Became known as the moonwalk. Thank you. Thank you. He would incorporate it into many of his performances. Anyway, Thriller also won a record-breaking eight Grammy Awards. Never before had a musical artist arguably been so culturally significant, especially with breaking down racial barriers. After all, Michael was an African American and the majority of his listeners now were not. Quote, Michael Jackson is mass culture, not pop culture. He appeals to everybody. A radio station program director said he appeals to all ages and he appeals to every kind of pop listener. This kind of performer comes once in a generation. In November 1983, Jackson entered a partnership with Pepsi. He reportedly got around $15 million in today's money for the endorsement, which was unheard of for a pop star to do at the time. Regardless, it so paid off. His head, man. Like, uh, really paid off. Pepsi ultimately made nearly $8 billion after that. So I'd say Pepsi got a good deal. On January 27th, 1984, Michael and some of his brothers were filming a Pepsi commercial when pyrotechnics accidentally caused some of his hair to catch on fire. This would cause second degree burns to Michael's scalp and he had surgery to hide the scars from it. Despite being the biggest pop star ever, Michael continued to record and release with his brothers. The Jacksons released Victory on July 2nd, 1984, and it was another smash success, mostly due to Michael. The Victory tour ended up being more like the Thriller tour, though. Michael finally left the group after this, and the group itself only lasted a few more years. In total, Michael recorded 15 studio albums with his brothers. Now that Michael was super rich, he began donating tons of money. Money. Indeed, Michael eventually donated large sums of money to at least 39 different charity organizations over the years, more so than any other pop star in history. In early 1985, he made a song with Lionel Richie called We Are the World to raise money for- We are the world. We are the children. For those I can in sing. poverty around the world. I can sing. A huge yeah, say success, I can't. Earning around you sound $175 crazy. million dollars in today's money and becoming one of the best selling singles of all time. Around this time, Jackson began buying the publishing rights to other people's songs. On August 10th, 1985, Jackson bought the publishing rights to most of the Beatles songs specifically. This uh, proved to be quite a smart investment. That said, Michael would struggle with finance for most of his life. Sure, he made lots of money, but he usually spent way more than he brought in. Mm. In 1986, the tabloids had begun focusing on Michael's skin. I was just on the, because he, they say he was donating to 39 countries, 600, I seen one, that said, that chick said $600,000. How much, $600,000? That's almost, the, you over at half a meal right there. I don't think he was ever going broke, though. I think he dragging it, but... Yeah. In color. It was becoming lighter, even leading to widespread speculation that Jackson had been bleaching his skin. That was As cap. it turns out, Jackson had vitiligo, a condition in which a person's immune system thinks melanin... So, boom. When I was younger, and I said in a previous video, I thought that... Damn, my fucking head is pounding, bro. I thought it was like his skin... I didn't know that because I know someone who's like this, but they was born like that. But with him, well, I don't know if he was born like that. I just know ever since I met him, it's been like that. But with Michael Jackson, it probably was coming like this in areas 
but they said he like just decided to make the rest the darker areas match the light patches on his body. I'm I thought his whole body just went like that. You know, he I guess he just felt he was more comfortable looking like that than I guess appearing like this, I guess. Melanin, or the stuff that gives our skin color, is bad, so it fights it off. He likely used a lot of makeup and possibly skin bleaching prescription creams to cover up uneven blotches of his skin caused by his vitiligo. But it wasn't just skin color that the tabloids focused on. Some reported that he had slept in a hyperbaric oxygen chamber to slow the aging process. Others stupid. reported he was anorexic since he had seemed to lose so much weight. Others said he took female hormone shots to keep his voice high that he had cosmetic surgery on his eyes then of course there were i couldn't deal with this many rumors bro F the first one i slept in a hyperbolic time chamber come on bro to slow my aging down um then the what was the other one he said the i just couldn't like bro this many rumors bro he probably he did have plastic surgery that one wasn't a rumor he probably did do that one but it's just i couldn't deal with, like bro i could like and this is before Instagram. And he was still going through with that. This is before Instagram. Before Twitter. Before Facebook. Before MySpace. Whatever social media network you want to throw out there. This is before all of that. And he still was dealing with this, bro. Shit crazy. Further rumors that Jackson was gay. He consistently denied that. The ah. September 15th, 1986 edition of The Sun labeled him Wacko Jacko. It was during all this tabloid craziness that Jackson returned to the studio to record his much anticipated follow up to Thriller. It took two and a half years to record. Jackson had a much more hands on role with the writing and producing process with this one, but once again returned with. Quincy Jones as the lead producer. The result was another masterpiece from Jackson. His seventh studio album, Bad, released by Epic on August 31st, 1987. Fans had waited five years for a new album of original songs, and they were not disappointed. Bad debuted at number one on the Billboard 200, staying there for six consecutive weeks. It ultimately sold more than 35 million copies. Sure, that was just half of how many copies Thriller sold, but it is still the 12th best selling album of all time and Jackson's second highest. Bad was the first album in American history to produce five number one singles. I Just Can't Stop Loving You, the title track, The Way You Make Me Feel, Man in the Mirror, and Dirty Diana. Man in the Mirror ultimately became the song that arguably not only defined his entire career, but was his finest song. As if all those songs weren't enough, Bad also featured the hits Smooth Criminal, Another Part of Me, and Leave Me Alone. Leave Me Alone, Though he Smooth Criminal. Need to, my Jackson shit. toured the world to support Bad. It was a bad tour. I mean, uh, it was the bad tour. Get it? Believe it or not, it was Jackson's first world tour. He performed 123 concerts in 15 countries to an estimated audience of 4.4 million people. The over 500,000 people who went to see seven consecutive sold-out no, shows how, at how much were the Wembley tickets? Stadium was a world record for most people to attend one show. Often by his side on this tour, his pet chimpanzee, Bubbles, who was like a first so rappers been buying spider monkeys and shit. I remember 2018. I remember young boy had one, young and age had one. Well, everything, bro. So this, I think, was a sign of him with the lonely. It's like he didn't. It's like he took it further by not getting a dog. He got a chimpanzee, bro. So that just goes to show you that even with all this shit, it wasn't everything to him, bro. We see all the things he had. And that's why when people say, when people, when when we say money's not everything, we not saying it as as like money doesn't matter money clearly matters bro money clearly matters but it ain't everything yeah he got the money but he probably still felt a little empty inside because he didn't get to be a regular kid bro 
child to Jackson. Jackson would often take Bubbles out and about with him. On February 1st, 1988, Jackson published his autobiography, which was edited by and featured a foreword by Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis. In the book, Jackson opened up about the abuse he got from his father growing up and explained all of his dramatic appearance changes in recent years. Now 30 years old, Jackson finally decided to move away from his parents. In March, he bought a 2,700-acre ranch near Santa Inez, California, about two and a half hours northwest of Los Angeles. Jackson renamed his new home the Neverland Ranch, and it would become one of the most famous homes of a public figure in the world. Jackson would build a private amusement park there that kids would regularly visit during the 1990s. Uh, yeah. More on that in a bit. Later that year, Warner Brothers released a collection of short musical films featuring Jackson, collectively known as Moonwalker. It was a box office hit. Jackson, the best-selling musician of the 1980s, attempted to keep a low profile after his bad tour ended. When he did go out and about, he wore ridiculous disguises. That summer, Jackson went back to the studio to begin recording a new album, this time working with producer Teddy Riley, Bill Bottrell, and Bruce Sweetian. Once again, Jackson was very hands-on with everything. This new stuff had much more of a new Jack Swing feel to it. Basically, it was definitely more influenced by hip-hop. The recording process would again be slow going. It once again took nearly two and a half years to complete a new album. Part Damn. of the delay was because Jackson had been negotiating a renewed contract with Epic Records. Jackson ended up getting a record-breaking deal, the equivalent of nearly $150 million in today's money. On November 26, 1991, Epic finally released Jackson's eighth studio album, Dangerous. It debuted at number one That's on the like Billboard 200 too. chart and spent four weeks total there. While critics were more mixed about it, Dangerous would be Jackson's third best-selling album of all time, ultimately selling more than 32 million copies. It remains the 29th best-selling album of all time. Dangerous featured four top ten hits, Remember the Time. Do you remember the time when we fell in in the closet. What the fuck? In the closet, Will You Be There, which was a prominent song on the Free Willy soundtrack, and Black or White. Black Other notable White. hits included Who Is It? Jam and Heal the World. Jackson went on another gigantic world tour to promote the album. All profits from it went to a wide range of charities, including Jackson's very own Heal the World Foundation, which primarily aimed to help end childhood poverty. The tour made more than $100 million. More than 3.5 million people attended its shows. Many of them were recorded and aired later in TV and film. Michael Jackson was in the spotlight quite a bit in 1993. It began with him Bro, seeing him black and then seeing him like this. Like, it just always did something to me, bro. Like, I just be like, fuck, bro. Like, not on no messed up shit. It was just like, damn, I really wish that didn't happen to him, you know? Urging the newly I wish no kids, period, had nothing like that. ...elected President Bill Clinton to give more money to HIV slash AIDS charities. Soon after this, he performed at the Super Bowl 27 halftime show. It was the first Super Bowl halftime show. They got a bigger viewership than the game it's... That's because... See, and I, and I remember I did a, we talked about this on a podcast, me and, um, me and MJ. You know, I think that was like my... third one I think we say I say you know because everybody's talking about the what happened with um the the halftime show with Alicia Keys and, and Usher you know Usher doing what he do um and I said you know what they kind of have to do that because I know everybody gonna be talking about it social media gonna be buzzing people gonna tune in that the the views is gonna be up rates gonna be up a lot of people kind of and I'm not talking down on them but it's just People have to do certain things to get up there. Michael Jackson, he's Michael Jackson. 
he gonna he gonna he he gonna sell out from his him on the stage alone. He don't gotta do no antics, none of that. He's Michael Jackson. He could do, bro. He he gonna sell out. He's gonna do this stuff at the Super Bowl with his. And obviously, you know, you got the people right there with them. They're gonna do what they do with just their performance. They don't need no antics. They don't gotta do all the extra shit, hugging, you know, a girl on the stage. They don't gotta do all that shit. Some people have to do that to get buzz. Self. On February 10th, millions watched a vulnerable Michael in an interview with Oprah Winfrey. Meanwhile, his Heal the World Foundation also brought underprivileged kids to Neverland Ranch to test out his amusement park. Many of these children spent quite a bit of time in his home. He shared his bedroom with many of these children. I think that's where he messed up at. And I mean that in the most respect that that's just he his intentions was good but that's where he messed up it had this never happened no allegations would have came out the false allegations that came out those wouldn't those wouldn't have happened his intents he meant well but his intentions his his intentions was good and he meant well but nah this is where he messed up at the amusement park should have cut it out that Later stating that these sleepovers were not sexual at all. Regardless, crazy rumors began to circulate, and in August 1993, a 13-year-old boy named Jordan Chandler accused Jackson of sexual abuse. Due to these allegations, police raided Jackson's Neverland Ranch and found, quote, art books that had nude children in them. Jackson's lawyers later argued that these books were irrelevant to the case, and long story short, Jackson. That's a fuck. That's this, bro. I'm questioning this. That's a lie. They ain't find no damn new art, art books with nude. He said nude children. Why are we lying? That that never happened. The insurance company settled with the Chandler family in January 1994. The Chandlers got $23 million in the settlement. While the police never charged Jackson with any crimes due to a lack of evidence, this all certainly looked bad for Jackson, and because of this, he lost many fans. That said, many other fans determinedly stood by him and were particularly excited to see that he had finally, apparently, found a soulmate. That soulmate? None other than Lisa Marie Presley, the daughter of Elvis Presley. She was a singer and songwriter herself. They first met as kids and reunited as friends for a while before falling in love. The two married on May 26th, 1994. Critics cynically thought the marriage was a publicity stunt meant to distract from the sexual abuse allegations. Still, the king of pop and the daughter of the king of rock seemed to legitimately dig each other. Just think, nobody thought this would last. Spoke too soon. Yeah, the marriage only lasted a year and a half, though. Yeah, Meanwhile, Tessa. Jackson had also developed an addiction to painkillers. In fact, he ended his world tour promoting Dangerous early due, in part, to that addiction. Also, meanwhile, he had been recording some new stuff. Much of this new stuff ended up on his ninth studio album, History, Past, Present, and Future, Book One, which was actually also a greatest hits album. In its most popular format, the CD, it came out as two discs, with the first disc being the greatest hits album, and the second being the new stuff. Epic released it on June 20th, 1995. Despite being expensive, I remember seeing it in some music stores for 30 dollars history was another commercial success eventually selling more than 20 million copies worldwide jackson's lyrics in history were highly personal and political in fact several of the songs referenced the sexual abuse allegations made against him history featured the singles childhood earth song this time around they don't care about us stranger in moscow and you are not alone which was the first 
song to ever debut at number one on the Billboard Hot 100 chart. It also featured a bunch of collaborations, including one of the hits, Scream, a duet with Jackson's sister, Janet, who by now was quite a big star herself. Critics also generally praised history, and it won tons of awards. Jackson went on another world tour to promote it, and that tour ended up being the highest grossing solo tour of the 1990s and most attended tour of all time by a single artist. 4.5 million fans saw it in average. That's the dance I knew I remember. A single it. artist. 4.5 million fans saw it. I be trying to hit that, bro. When I be slapping in the morning, bro, I be trying to hit that dance. But anytime Michael Jackson come on, but I never really could get it, you know? Seen it now. An average bro. of around 55,000 people per show. It took place in 58 different cities in 35 different countries. It'd be his final world tour, though, and little did fans know that he'd hardly perform at all after it. During that tour, Jackson remarried to his friend, Debbie Rowe. The two would have two children together, Prince and Paris. However, that marriage also didn't work out, only lasting about three years. On May 20th, 1997, Epic released Blood... I want to say something so bad, bro. Paris. However, that marriage also didn't work out, only lasting about three years. On May 20th, 1997... Michael, you wasn't fucking with the, like, the, the sister, bro? Like, you wasn't fucking with the sisters? No disrespect to, 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 to your kid's mother. I'm just saying, like... An epic released Blood on the Dance Floor, History in the Mix, a remix album. Mostly remixes of songs on history, but also new songs, including the hit Blood on the Dance Floor. That's my... Susie got your number. Susie ain't your friend. Look who got you. Mm -mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Blood is on the dance floor. Blood is on the night. That's just my Four years, anger. Jackson slowly recorded his 10th studio album. He worked with several different producers and recorded it at at least 11 Is different studios. Oh, and apparently also spent $30 million on it. During this time, Jackson got into a label dispute with Sony, who owned Epic. Jackson had hoped to get the licenses to all of the masters of his recordings, but Sony had misled him, so this didn't happen. On March 19th, even Michael was getting fucked over. Jackson became the youngest person ever inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame as a solo artist. On September 7th and 10th, 2001, Jackson performed two big shows at Madison Square Garden in New York City to celebrate his 30th year as a solo artist. The shows were a huge success. Tickets sold out within two hours, with some tickets selling for more than $17,000 in today's money. CBS aired the concert to an estimated 30 million viewers and later turned it into a concert film. On September 11th, 2001, the and day... None of his brothers also caught this, too, this vitiligo, or never, like, damn. After the second show, Michael was supposed to have a meeting at the World Trade Center. However, he overslept and missed the meeting, thus saving his life because... You know, it was 9-11. That was the day the towers got hit. Invincible, which Epic released on October 30th, 2001, is today considered the most expensive album ever made. Invincible was his final studio album before his death. And while it was another hit, it wasn't nearly as successful as his previous albums. That said, it did feature one top ten single, You Rock My World, and two other singles, Butterflies and Cry. Jackson decided not to tour to promote the album, and Sony stopped promoting it, leading Jackson to call its CEO, Tommy Mottola, a racist, quote, devil who historically exploited African-American artists. Really? Sony defended Mottola and soon parted ways with Jackson. On February 21st, 2002, Michael's third child, Blanket, was born. An anonymous surrogate mother gave birth to him. For the rest of his life, Michael strongly protected his kids' privacy, even having them wear masks and veils when paparazzi were around. On April 24th, 2002... Wait, I heard about that. So that last kid wasn't... 
they surrogate. So that means like I don't know none of this shit. So they took his shit and put it in a woman, and then she. That's what happened. Jackson performed at the same place the Jackson 5 had won an amateur show 35 years prior at Harlem's legendary Apollo Theater. Though no one knew it at the time, this would be his final solo performance. The next month, a documentary film crew began following Jackson around as he lived his day-to-day -day life. The documentary, called Living with Michael Jackson, ended up airing on February 3rd, 2003. However, Jackson was not happy with how it turned out. In fact, in it, Jackson openly talks about sleeping in a bedroom with multiple children. I brought that up earlier. Well, yeah, this outraged many yet again and led to many more new sexual abuse accusations and investigations. On December 18th, 2003, Santa Barbara authorities arrested Jackson and charged him with seven counts of child molestation and two counts of intoxicating a minor with alcoholic drinks. The trial didn't begin until early 2005. A jury found Jackson not guilty on all counts. Later, the FBI confirmed that it had no evidence of Jackson committing crimes. Regardless, the whole ordeal dramatically hurt Jackson's reputation, even more so than it got hurt back in 1993. Not only that, it caused his health to decline. After the trial, Jackson became much more of a recluse. In 2006, media outlets reported that Jackson was defending himself against 47 different lawsuits and had really, really bad debt. Yep, what? despite all that money he had earned from his music over the decades, he was about to go bankrupt. It got so bad that Jackson had to use his music publishing rights deal as collateral to borrow more money. To save money, he closed his Neverland ranch. I don't know how much I believe this dude, bro. I'm going to be honest. Y'all believe in him? and moved to Bahrain to live with his friend, Sheikh Abdullah. But even Sheikh Abdullah got fed up with his friend Jackson not paying him back, and Jackson spent the next three years living here and there or wherever he could as debt collectors followed his tracks. He now owed at least $500 million. Meanwhile, he had been trying to record new stuff here and there also, and had started planning a series of huge comeback concerts at the O2 Arena in London. Initially, ticket sales were promising, and the hype was real, but on this is 25th, it. 2009, less than three weeks before the concerts were to begin, Jackson was found dead at his rented mansion in Los Angeles. He was just 50 years old. The official cause of death was acute propofol intoxication. Put simply, he died from a drug overdose. As it turns out, Jackson's personal doctor, Conrad Murray, had given him the drugs to supposedly help him sleep. A jury later found Murray guilty of involuntary manslaughter, and he served two years in prison. Fans around the world were shocked and devastated about Jackson's death especially as they had been looking forward to his comeback tours. An estimated 2.5 billion people watched his televised memorial service. Jackson's music all of a sudden was more popular than it had ever been before. In the year after his death, more than 35 million more copies of his albums were sold. That said, by this point in history, streaming services were now more popular than buying records, and so many of Jackson's songs suddenly became the most streamed songs on various sites. Since Jackson's death, others have made at least $600 million from his music. And it's an empire that isn't going away anytime soon. And yet, today, Michael Jackson's legacy is mixed. On one hand, he's still the king of pop for his overwhelming influence on modern pop music. Few in history have single-handedly had such an impact on culture. His songwriting, music, and singing and dancing style inspired 
multiple generations. At the time of the release of this video, Jackson had sold around 400 million copies of his albums worldwide, making him possibly the highest selling solo artist in history. On the other hand, Jackson had a messed up personal life. At best, it was weird. At worst, it may have been as dark as it can get, man. In recent years, his reputation has further been tarnished by more allegations of sexual abuse of minors, as seen in the documentary Leaving Neverland. And so, despite his enormous success, Jackson will likely always be one of the most controversial public figures in history. Now, that doesn't mean we can't love his music, because his music, well, it continues to make the world a much better place. That was a solid ending to the video. I never, like, I don't know, I don't... Any other new accusations I never really knew about, but the one with the that shit was crazy though. That's why, hey bro, I think that's where he messed up at when he just got a little like he just he loved children and wanted children to he he wanted to relive his childhood. So he you know I I ain't condoning nobody doing anything like that. You know I just don't personally think he did the first those first ones. I don't know about this other one. I doubt he did any of them to be honest. But I just I don't condone that from nobody. Anyways, hope y'all like this video, man. If y'all like this video, y'all know what to do, man. Get at me on the next video. Rest in peace to Kari, X, my grandma, both our grandmas, and I'm gone.